Salsa is flavor and spice. Salsa is Latin soul. Salsa is ritmo, rhythm. In 1973, a Puerto Rican named Izzy Snobria launched a TV show called Salsa. He also launched a magazine called Latin and Why, where he would commonly use the term salsa. And in 1975, Latin and Why magazine hosted its first ever Salsa Awards. Coverage of this event by the NY Times, Newsweek, and Time magazine generated worldwide interest in what seemed to be a new form of music. Some musicians protested the term salsa, complaining that Issy was merely putting a new label on Cuban music. But in many ways, it was new. It had evolved over time to something unique in its own right. It started in Africa, con la conga, skin on wood. El bongo. Of salsa and clave. El ritmo de África al Caribe, Puerto Rico, Santo Domingo, Cuba, México, Sudamérica. They are mixed with the Indian. El timbal. El guiro. What was originally of African-Cuban origin had found a home in America and adopted by the Latino community of New York. Innovations made by Puerto Rican musicians such as Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, Willie Colon, and Hector Laval transformed the Afro-Cuban-based music to a unique New York Latin music. Modern salsa is something that was evolved here through the fusion of different cultural influences making what some might consider a homegrown America phenomenon. In the 1980s, Eddie Torres began to formalize Mambo on Two and made it something professional dancers could learn by standardizing and teaching a repertoire of moves that had names to them. We now call the dance Salsa since the term Salsa has become internationally accepted to refer to music of African-Cuban origin as well as New York's Latin music and their dances. Moving Salsa education out of the street and into the studio made it easier for students to learn spins and as a result the salsa today emphasizes more partner work and closed position dancing. This is also attributed to the popularity of the hustle in the Latino community during the 70s and their incorporation of the partner work into salsa. So I guess some good did come out of the disco days after all, but definitely not the fashion. Formalizing salsa made the dance much more marketable because it meant it could be taught in a class. Now, studios all around the world offer salsa classes, and it's become one of the most popular social dance styles out there. There are people dancing salsa in London, Taiwan, Korea, India, even Japan. Incredible, incredible, incredible. 
So in a nutshell, Africans were brought over to Cuba and as a result of the slave trade, their music blended with that of the Cubans and a marriage between the clave and the African drums was now formed. Mambo came along much thanks to Perez Parado who took it to America. He introduced the big band sound by adding brass instruments and Americans loved it and so they began the glory days of Mambo, innovation by New York's Puerto Rican musicians added an element of jazz, the sound of pianos, the music was transformed into what Izzy Sanabria labeled as salsa. As for the dance, Perez Prado spiced up the Cuban danzo and taught a new, more energetic dance called the Mambo. The Mambo came to the U.S. and incorporated elements of ballroom, swing, jazz, and tab while preserving its Latin steps. In the 70s, the influence of the partner word aspect of the hustle left its mark on the Mambo is brought off the street and into the studios in the 1980s by Eddie Torres and was now called the Salsa. Whew. So there you have it. A history that tells of a style of dance that's really a fusion of many different cultures. The dance continues to evolve this way today, the newer generation mixing in components of hip-hop, belly dancing, adding lifts and aerial moves